All right. Hey guys, Matt Sutton here. Welcome back to Mastering You and a happy 2022. Here we go. Let's uh, let's try again. <laughs> let's try again. We thought this time last year that things were going to get a lot better, right? But um, uh, I'm feeling confident that this year, this is all of our year. This is the year where it changes. And, uh, and I have a great episode to kick off the year for us to do that. I can't think of a better episode than someone that is going to writes a book about happiness and that is Zara Carson. So Zara is the CEO of an app called Get Zend. Uh, she's an inspirational speaker and success coach to global C-level executives and she's just launched her new book. Uh, it reached a bestseller. Uh, it has been a bestseller. It's called The Six Weeks to Happy. Six Weeks to Happy. The ultimate roadmap to retrain your brain for better health, greater abundance, and long-lasting happiness. Can you think of a better way to start the new year than listening to a podcast by Zara? And myself, hopefully not. Um, So yeah, the book debuted at number one on the Amazon and Barnes & Noble charts. And it also hit the number one on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list too. Um, So this is a step-by-step guide that will train you to rewire your brain and break the cycles of stress, anxiety, and depression, and improve your overall mental and emotional health, okay? So um, I think there's a lot of people right now that would really benefit from these steps. And in this episode um, that we've just recorded, Zara kindly goes through her framework, um, specifically goes through each step. Um, obviously, you can grab a copy of the book to go and do a deep dive. Um, but I, I must say, I really, really enjoyed this episode. I actually made lots of notes myself. Uh, me and Zara are definitely on the same page in terms of how important it is to understand how your brain works so you can improve your self-awareness, um, self-control, and ultimately use that knowledge to achieve your goals, which is hopefully what you want to do in 2022. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode, the first of 2022 with Zara Carson. Zara, welcome to Mastering You. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing, man? I'm better now talking to you. (laughs) <laughs> uh, like I was just saying to you just before we started just having a look through your bio and um, yeah I needed to spare an hour for that <laughs> oh dear uh, no, it's, a long it's life already. so impressive so impressive you know um, so Zara you have recently launched your book six weeks to happy really exciting time for you well done how long did it take you to to um to write that book it was probably a work in progress for a period of two to three years, I would say. And it was like a little start and stop as I was trying to, you know, massage the data and the material, figure out how I wanted to present it. Um, and then it all really came together, you know, COVID started and we went into lockdown. I had this chunk of time where I said, okay, I'm just gonna clear away the noise and I'm just gonna sit and get it done. And uh, it came out in September, the first week of September and we did really well. We hit the Wall Street Journal bestseller list, which was humbling and amazing at the same time still processing that but that's I'm just, fantastic I'm, yeah I'm just grateful that this book is out and uh, and I'm excited to share it with people because I think it's a really powerful body of work and I, I think it can really help people shift their mindset and give them the tools to do that because we don't you know we're not given those tools we're not given a map for how to navigate mm. this big thing called life and we're all just trying to figure out how to get through it and piece by piece you know learning how to put that puzzle together so yeah I'm we, to share this. I think more and more in the last sort of 10 20 years we're sort of learning how to as adults we have to relearn a lot right um <laughs> <laughs> and oh, right. doing doing this podcast and speaking to people like yourself has made me realize that as well just how much we have to relearn as adults. You were just saying before we started how really this book was sort of to educate people uh, in and around another awesome thing that you have, which is Get Zen, which is your app. 
and um and really educating people around you know why that's important and i i just thought straight away that's that's fantastic at lpt we have our, our what we call our triple h formula we all have to have yeah. these acronyms and formulas don't we and and our triple h is health happiness and high performance and um and you know obviously we're in the business of helping people get fit and healthy but i'm a big believer, hence the name of this podcast, that we need to be working on all aspects of life to do that. However, <laughs> the problem comes is when we're talking about things like happiness and what people think of as a bit woo-woo mindfulness and meditation, um, it's, all, it's still to this day a, a little bit of a taboo kind of topic, you know, when you're talking mm -hmm. about fitness and exercise and what you eat, it's kind of like, yeah, I get that. But um the education part of, of mindfulness and understanding um, the benefits that that can bring you, I think that's fantastic. And I'd really like to get deep into the contents of your book and, and the education that you are providing to the world. Sure. Thank you for that. I mean, I, I completely agree with you there. I think, you know, finding, well, first of all, I think there's a, a misconception around mindfulness and meditation because it's not the only way you can achieve a quieter mind, but achieving a quieter mind is essential to happiness and success. Because if we're living in this state of stress all the time and we have a built-in fight or flight response, like we actually evolved to be good at survival. We didn't evolve to be good at this thing called happiness or this thing called success or successful living, however you wanna frame that. And so, you know, that became my fascination. I became fascinated with the human condition and, and understanding how to move beyond all of those things that hold us back in life, whether that's creating more love and connection, deeper, you know, healthy, loving relationships in our life, whether that's connecting with the things that make us feel good and bring us back to peace. And I realized that what we've done over the years is we've gotten so good at just running an autopilot. So you know, back in the day, how this how this evolved to, to get to where we are now is back in the day, our ancestors used to actually have to flee from danger. You know, we're talking predator in the bushes kind of deal. And so that fight or flight response really worked well because it was, it acts like a gas pedal. You know, it pushes this rush of adrenaline through the body so that we can flee to safety. But back then, as long as we, we got to safety and the threat was gone, our brains would then signal our nervous system to say, there's no threat anymore. It's okay to return back to our calmer state of rest and digest. In today's world, there's none of that. We've forgotten that we actually have the ability to access that state of peace. And it's very difficult to find joy, to find freedom, to, to accumulate wealth if we're living in that fear and that stressful state all the time. Mm. So how do we retrain away from that was one of the things I became really interested in. And, and then I started exploring, like, what are the elements that really lead to health and happiness, as you say, and human performance? Because that's, you know, I, I'm all about how do we neurohack our they mindset? All, they all kind of go together, don't they? They all bounce off each other. I mean, who, who do you yes. know that's a high performing human that's really unhealthy? You know, yes. but equally, how, you know, how many people are high performing and not happy? If you're performing well in life, you're probably going to be pretty happy. But you know that you don't generally see one without the other or if you yeah, know you get what i'm saying they, they do sure. bounce off each other yeah and how they're interconnected you know most people when they think of health they think of just your physical body for example well sure your physical body is your tangible physical body but it's also a gauge for how we're doing i like to think of it as aligning the four bodies so there's a spiritual body a mental body an emotional body and a physical body and I think the physical body, you know, it certainly gets us through the day and it, you know, functions and does all of the things that we need it to do, but it's also a gauge for how we're doing. If we're not addressing our spiritual or mental emotional needs, then it comes out in our physical body as discomfort, as chronic inflammation, as autoimmune disorder, as disease, mm -hmm. as a discomfort in life. You know, we get irritable, we have stuff and emotions that aren't processed and we hold it all inside and it starts to eat away at us in terms of physical symptoms. So I think of the spiritual body as your, you know, your connection to God or source. And so information sort of trickles down from the spiritual body or the energetic body. However you want to think of it is fine. It's non-denominational. It's not faith-based. It's really 
understanding that we are energetic beings. We, we have to manage our energy levels. We respond to people's energy, whether it's positive or negative, we feel it. And it's time we start really like accepting that we need to acknowledge this as part of our overall well-being and start to look after it in, in more clear ways. And then the mental body is really, you know, it's your decision making, it's your thought processes. And as information flows, that's where you make you set your goals, and it's where you make decisions, it's your sort of CEO. And then as information flows from there, it gets, it hits the emotional body. And so all of those old emotions and negative emotions that got trapped somewhere early on before we were even aware that these things were happening, um, that's where all of our feelings, you know, all of those negative emotions and old feelings and fears lay. And so we set an intention, we set a goal, and then we get stuck somewhere and we don't know how to move beyond. Well, I became fascinated with the science of how to move beyond. So mm. you know, that's all about mastering your thoughts and your feelings. And so when we think of consciousness, I think it really is choosing to think and feel in certain ways that have us perform more powerfully in life, whether that's bringing us more joy, freedom, success, wealth, yeah. love, you know, happiness in all ways. Um, so yeah, it's, it's absolutely interconnected. And I don't think I was searching for it for over 30 years. So I wanted to put together a body of work and teach people an easy set of tools that they could learn in six weeks. And that's why I created the book and the rewire system, which is covered in the book, six weeks to happen. Yeah. Well, we'll get, let's, let's get into the rewire system in a second. So just before that, so your, your background before this, you know, where, where did all this interest stem from? <laughs> uh, well, that's an interesting story. I was actually born in South Africa during apartheid. So, wow. you know, I think at a okay. young age, yeah, it was uh, quite, quite an experience. I think at a young age, I was exposed to some things like, you know, confusion and discrimination and humiliation and, and difficult to process emotions at such a, a small age, such a young age. And so, you know, you decide things, I think it was Helen Keller that said a child will go through life with no concept of time, you know, they'll fall, they'll dust, pick themselves up, they'll have a little cry, they'll dust off, and they'll figure out a way to move forward until one day, something so powerful happens that causes them to ask the question, why? And then what happens is it's the human condition to create a story about that moment, to just explain it to ourselves, because we need to make sense of the world. Mm. And so our little three-year-old self, for example, makes a little decision like, oh, well, I guess I'm not enough because of the color of my skin, or I'm not enough, or I'm not smart enough, or I'm not this enough, talented enough. And then that becomes our subconscious story. So if yeah. we're 5% conscious mind, 95% subconscious, and all of this stuff, all of these emotions, all of these old thought patterns are existing in the subconscious, and we think we're, we've got full control of our lives, but we're only living in that sliver of the 5%. How powerful would we be if we could access that 95% and uncover the things that are stopping us from having what we want in our lives? So that became really fascinating for me. And so, you know, I, I, I think that started my journey to answer your question. And then I just, I started in a career, you know, I started studying psychology and then did a postgrad in telecoms management and project management and became a management consultant for over 20 years. And I was working at a very high level. I was working with C-level executives for over 25 years. Um, and I worked, you know, as a trusted advisor, I managed projects that went from five to 50 million. So they were big, big projects that did very well. And I started to see patterns in all of the research. After that, I started a coaching business and I launched the Get Zend app. And as I was doing my own research, my own studies, I continued studies with neuroscience and positive psychology. And then I wanted to, so I understood, I wanted to study neuroscience because I wanted to understand optimal brain health and how the brain processes thoughts, feelings, how do we change habits and create new habits. And then I studied positive psychology because it's the science of how we go from neutral to happiness and well being and thriving and really flourishing in life. But then I thought there's this big piece called the subconscious, and how do we understand that piece mm -hmm. so I can really give people powerful tools? And so I studied neurolinguistic programming and hypnotherapy, and that helped me sort of tap in. And I started to see patterns in the data. And I thought, okay, this is 
this is what I want to do. This is going to be my mission in life. So I want to help people untap their human potential and help them reach peak performance. And so I, I put the set of tools together that became the book. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What, what do you feel, what, what's the biggest, uh, is, is childhood and experiences early on one of the biggest contributors to um, this untangling of patterns that don't serve us in, in later life or what would you Yeah, I down? think that's part of it. I think part of it is, you know, if you imagine, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold here. If you imagine entering a marathon or training for a race, let's say, with a previous injury already, you know, how powerful is your training going to be? And then how powerful will your performance be in that race? Well, if you then just look at the injuries that were happening, heal those first, and then go into your training, you're starting from a completely different plateau. Mm -hmm. And so I became interested in, okay, we, we know, you know, the success formula, there's so many books on, you know, habits of successful people and all of that. We've read all of the great entrepreneur books. Um, but what about the rest? What about that missing piece? What about that big bucket of people that are just getting stuck and they don't know why they're yeah. stuck? Yeah. You know, they have some yeah, sense. Yeah, because the habit, all of those personal development books that have all the habits and do this and you, you get the best life, that's all, a, that's all a sort of bit like, bit like fitness. And it's a bit like us having a new member join our gym and we don't do any kind of assessment on them. And we just, we don't do any kind of movement assessment and we just assume that they have no injuries, they have no tight muscles, they have no um, past past dysfunction that's going to stop them, and we can just put them into the session, which is about Absolutely. probably 0.8% of the people that we actually do get. You know, pretty much everyone that comes to LPT, they need some form of regression because of past injuries, past, yeah. And I guess, yeah, it's just the, the mental version of that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can, you know, our belief systems and our values that get defined early on in life before we even conscious that we made those decisions. We've heard the term limiting beliefs. You can think of them as limiting beliefs, but I started to see patterns in the data. So it doesn't matter if it's a health and fitness goal. A lot of that is mental and emotional. So if you believe you can achieve it, you can achieve it. You can get the best trainers. You can have the greatest nutrition, but unless you know how to build that set of habits to actually get you to your goal, you know, we're always going to fall a little bit short. And I mean, the diet industry and the fitness industry can tell you that, you know, it's quite cyclical. People get really stuck in this whole mode and they fall just short of their goal. Mm -hmm. There's some that actually make it and it's wonderful, but a lot of us really just get stuck. And so I, I thought it was really important to figure out how to help people. And what I realized is, you know, those set of fears that get us stuck fall into basically five main categories is what I started seeing in the data. And if you can start to unravel those and all it takes is some awareness. So when I think of mindfulness, I think of it as self-awareness. It's just yeah. cultivating that ability to pause and just observe yourself. So rather than, you know, waking up in the morning, we have a set of automatic thoughts and feelings that start to run us. It's being able to pause and say, okay, I see that I'm having feelings of stress for the day or anxiety for the day or worry about whether or not I can reach this goal. And it's just taking that moment and saying, what do I want to feel and think instead and stepping into that mindset? But most mm -hmm. people don't know how to do that. Now, if you're able to take away some of these five pieces, now not, not everyone has all five, but I'll describe a couple of them to you. I described one of mine was I, I that feeling of not being good enough. And I thought, well, that's not going to be my story. I need to, I need to move beyond that. Um, so figuring out, you know, where that came from and how to unravel it. And then suddenly we start to see evidence to the contrary, but it, it takes that awareness first of being able to name our patterns, our subconscious patterns, and then being able to move beyond that's going to be something. So imagine how that plays out. So if you have a fear that you're not enough, not smart enough, not tall enough, not strong enough, not capable enough, not educated enough. You know, it's a story that we're telling ourselves. There's lots of success stories, for example, of people that have a high school education that ended up becoming the greatest entrepreneur ever. And, you know, there are other people telling themselves, well, I need to have a postgraduate education in order to do that. Sure, it certainly helps. It helps you think critically in different ways but it doesn't stop you from doing it. What stops you is more the belief of whether or not you can actually get there. 
And once we untangle that belief system, you can just pick up that obstacle, move it aside, and then step forward. Now that's much more powerful. Yeah. You know, it's the difference between, you know, even our, our beliefs around money and creating wealth is the same thing. So if we have subconscious beliefs about money that are stopping us from accumulating wealth in this life, you know, as we're living it now, well, I could teach you 100 wealth strategies. And if you got the belief that you're never going to be able to achieve that wealth, well, you won't. But you take another person who's removed this obstacle that they can get there. I teach them 100 wealth strategies, and I assure you they'll get there. Yeah. Right. So it's that yeah. it's that level of power. And, and we just need the tools. We just need the tools. And that's the part that's so exciting is if we can have the tools and, and hand someone the, the hammer or the screwdriver to get the job done, then you can get the job done. You can't do it without yeah. that tool. Though. And that's where systems like the your rewired do come in place. Because like you said earlier, because we live in quite a sort of chaotic, busy techno world now uh, with, with noise and distraction everywhere, um, you know, it, it can be quite chaotic if you haven't got some sort of framework or system to follow so i think this is why so many coaches and and you know people like myself we, we try and help our clients by creating simple frameworks and systems it's something that i've been doing for many years now um, yes. so yours is the rewire system and uh, the r is relax and quiet the mind right yes so this is about learning how to retrain the mind back to calm. So like I said at the start, you know, we have this really strong negativity bias and this really strong fight or flight response. It's our stress response. We have to learn how to retrain. So imagine you've gone into the, the gym unknowingly training our strength response and our, our stress response over the years, and we've forgotten that we actually have this calm muscle that we can access. Yeah. So we need to now go back in and balance that out by retraining back to calm. And what I've realized over the last few years is, you know, you talked about it at the, at the start of this show is that, you know, people think of mindfulness as something woo woo. Well, I've started to realize through, you know, sort of interviewing so many different people is that you don't have to sit in meditation. You can do it in other ways, whether that's, you know, I have a friend that takes long bike rides and that's meditative for him. I ended up speaking with a, a publisher and he started taking during COVID, he started taking three hour walks. And he said, it's the most peaceful time of his day. He ended up getting into a better state of health, but it also just helped him so much mentally and emotionally just to unplug yeah. and go. And he actually started getting beautiful ideas flowing. So that speaks to the spiritual body as well. Cause when you're out and you're grounding with nature and you're feeling calm, that's when ideas actually flow. So if you want to spark creativity, which is also strategic thinking, by the way, is a creative mm -hmm process you need to be relaxed and happy so if you you know just have yeah. the tools to learn to quiet the mind the health benefits are astounding it boosts your immune system it decreases inflammation it actually increases focus and productivity in the brain by up to 10 times it decreases stress and anxiety so the health benefits are you know that you can't you can't deny them i think we all need that and if you don't want to sit in meditation no problem. Find a way to, to connect with yourself, find a way to ground yourself, find a way to relax the mind. And, and once you get quiet, you can think from a more powerful place because you're not accessing the negative emotions anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I love that. I think, I think that, that analogy that people sometimes use of having lots of windows open on your computer is always a good one, isn't it? If you, yes. you know, your, your computer starts slowing down more and more and you're trying to hit the browser and it's not loading and then you realize you've got a hundred different windows open and it's, it's, you know your brain very much works the same if you're trying to think about 101 different things rather than just yeah. zone it in on one window and just give yourself maybe just you to think about suddenly you feel and you think much quicker and clearer sure um, absolutely yeah it, and then yeah so Go ahead. e is eliminate the noise <laughs> so that, i guess that kind of goes hand in hand with the relaxed and quiet the mind right it does the eliminating the noise module is really about so those those primal you know fears that get stuck in our emotional body early on it's going into those five patterns that showed up as the most common five and i give some variations in the book of how it can show up in your life so i speak i spoke to the first one which is i i'm not enough the second one can be uh 
I'm alone in this world, some function of that. Now, it doesn't always sound like I'm alone. It could sound like, you know, and you've heard people say something like, you know, I've never really had anyone that was there for me. I've always had to do things for myself. Yeah. Right? You've heard yeah. people say this. Oh, right? yeah, lots. <laughs> Is that fully true? Or yeah. you know, have you had friends there to support you, colleagues there to support you? But when you have that subconscious belief, it's so powerful. Go ahead. Does that go back into what you were saying earlier? You, you sort of glossed over it quickly, but how we do have hu the human brain has this bias towards negativity. Um, can you just go into that a little bit? Because I think sure. that's really important for people to understand. We do have this, and I guess it it's all stems from the survival mechanism that we have inbuilt. We're always primed to survive first and thrive second. Absolutely. But, um, but it comes up a lot. And I think if you do have the self-awareness around you know oh i'm having a bit of a bad day i'm being a bit of a you know bit uh, maybe i'm angry maybe i'm just a bit touchy um or maybe something's got to me more than i thought it should do you know and yes. then you if you can remember that well actually that's kind of your brain working how it should be rather than just you know that that's that's a good thing to kind of just observe isn't it for sure well the negativity bias so it's a, it's a a term that was coined in positive psychology. And it really means that we are, we are designed to be on high alert for danger. So I spoke to the fight or flight response and that stress response, and you're absolutely right, it is connected. But what that means is as we're going through life, just think about, for example, uh, when something wonderful happens in your life, how much time do you take to celebrate it? Yeah, Versus not, when something not goes much. Wrong, not right. Either. Yeah. Versus when something goes wrong, oh my God, how much time do we spend ruminating and worrying yeah. about it, playing it over in our head, whether it was a bad conversation or a bad meeting or a business deal that went south, we run that story over and over and over. Mm. So that's part of it. And the other piece of it is, and I found this really fascinating, is we have 2 million bits of information per second coming at us at any moment, whether it's you know, the lighting, the airflow, the, you know, everything our brain needs to process, but we're not consciously processing that much. We can only actually process 134 bits per second. So what happens to all the other data? It gets deleted, distorted, and generalized. And so we process just a snippet of that and we store it away as memory. So all the emotions in, and our interpretation of the event in that moment gets recorded and stored within our brain and our body because it holds space in us especially mm -hmm. if it's something triggering or traumatic or hurtful or difficult or challenging in any way and it gets stored as memory but it's not real so if it's not real and you can go back and unravel it you can change the story but just having the tools is, is really what's and needed. these are the things that obviously create those subconscious limiting beliefs often right yes absolutely Mm. Absolutely. It's an automatic response. It's not something we choose. I mean, who would choose to not feel good enough? Who would choose to feel stressed and worried all day? If I could choose, I would choose instead to feel joy, to mm. feel gratitude, to feel like I'm so blessed. I have so much love and abundance in my life. It's, you know, I've got the life of my dreams, you yeah. know, but nobody would choose to feel stressed. So that's all our automatic subconscious response that all resides in the subconscious. And it just takes having some awareness and understanding your personal patterns in order to step outside of it. In positive psychology, we say, you know, in terms of processing emotions, if you can name it, then you're in a position of power. If you can't right. name it, then it has power over you. Mm. Yeah, right? I like that. I like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and in the recent years, I guess the, the whole sort of gratitude journaling has been one of the, the big sort of ways of, of working against that and being better at being grateful for you know things that are going for you in your life and it, yeah. it's quite it's quite scary actually we, we we have an app that we use for our coaching our clients and we we get them to score out of 10 how well they slept last night how high their motivation is and Perfect. Um, and and also one of the things that we get them to score is uh, how high their gratitude levels are but um it does surprise me. We have a lot of people when they first join and they, what does gratitude mean? Is the question we get. Wow. And wow. I find that quite insightful. I'm like, wow, yeah. we've got some work to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, exactly. Um, 
so moving on to uh, the W. So what do you need? Defining your personal plan. Oh. This is where we get to action stage, right? Yeah. So this is, so now we've removed the noise. We've looked into the subconscious. We've taught you how to move those obstacles aside and how to rewrite your story. And this is what you do as a coach. So as a coach, you know, I have these wonderful people come and, and see me and I think you're a completely together person. Why is it that this person hasn't reached their goals yet? And so it's my job as a coach to step into their model of the world so I can understand where they constructed all of their walls and then learn to tear them down so that they can actually see more possibility around them. And so in, in this, I'm trying to give people the tools to do that for themselves. So just that, that last conversation was exactly perfect, the gratitude point you made, because as I was trying to coach people, you know, part of your job is trying to figure out where they are now and get them to where they need to be and then help them create a plan to get there. And so as we started crafting and defining goals for them, I realized as we started talking about the end state, you know, the how, the how do you want to feel? How do you think you'll feel when you get there, when you've mm. achieved that wealth, when you have that loving relationship, when you have more financial and emotional freedom, when you have more time to see your, your loved ones and, and do the things you love in this world, when you have that sort of life. And I realized most people couldn't actually functionally tell me what made them happy. And so I was shocked as you were with this gratitude question. And I thought, oh, wow, okay, I need to take a step back with everyone. And I need to, because I realized people don't really ask you in life, what makes you happy, Matt? Yeah. What do you need right now to feel peaceful, to feel centered? What do you need right now to feel whole and complete? You know, we're not asked that. We're kind of a student and we're told to get good grades and then graduate somehow and then get a job or a career and then do well at that and then get the house and the car and then yeah we're taught we're taught how to do that stuff like how to get the car and how to get a job and maybe how to choose a career but not really kind of like how to live i guess day to day in, in between those areas of and, exactly. and also like managing it all and balancing it all between work life balance family finances it's yeah um, exactly you you're have right. to learn we're it getting... as you go along don't you Exactly. But what the piece that was missing for me is we're not, we're not ever taught to consciously think about whether those things will actually bring us fulfillment. So if we're given a set of marching orders and we're not really taking the time to figure out, does that make sense for me? Does that resonate for me? I mean, somebody's telling me you want to get in the best work, you know, best shape of your life, go do CrossFit. No, <laughs> I don't want to do CrossFit. I'd rather do anything but yeah. CrossFit. So it's not a one size fits all formula. And we are, every single one of us are unique. And so what we need, what your partner needs, what your sibling needs, what your friend needs, what your kids need, is going to be different than what you specifically need on a day-to-day -day basis, on a weekly basis. And so in this chapter, I'm sort of giving people the tools to break down the various areas of their life and say, literally, how many hours of social activity do you need to feel really, really good? If your partner or your spouse isn't social, but you need a night out, go get your night out. Figure out how to negotiate that within your relationship so that everyone is having what they need. Because the thing is, needs are not negotiable. If we are not having our needs met and we have no awareness of what those needs are, over time, we start to get irritable. We start to get cranky. We start to get uncomfortable in our lives. And we start to feel like something's really missing. Like, what, what is happening here? Why are we living this thing? Yeah, I think it's Tim Ferriss that says, if, if you don't prioritize your time, someone else will. will. <laughs> how, how exactly, I love him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. So that, yeah. What so, do you need really helping people define that for themselves? Yeah, no, that's so important is defining your core needs. That's great. So moving on to the I, so imagining and visualizing a new future and realizing yeah. a different outcome. Oh, I like this yes. one. Oh, this is exciting because now we've, we've pulled the walls down. We've taken away everything preventing you from, from love, from financial freedom, from happiness, from better health, from feeling good, from feeling peaceful, and taken away the sources of stress and anxiety that have been running you for so long. 
Now you can stand in a space where you can really create something. And in the last chapter, we've then gone into, okay, now what do you think you need? Like what is going to make you feel like your most excited, vibrant self, living life as though you're really excited to wake up every day and go and, and tackle the day? Well, this part is digging into your values. So values are the things that are important to us. And if you're not designing your life around the things that are important to you, then pieces are going to fall short. So for example, one of my values is freedom. I, you know, I hated going to a corporate <laughs> office, right? I hated going into an office nine to five. I did it for so many years. Now I love the freedom of working with the ocean as my view or working from a, you know, a little cafe with my team or working remotely or working from anywhere in the world. Mm. Um, but then that plays out in your relationships too. And in your work relationships, it plays out really in every area of your life. So building your top three to five values into your life is going to give you a much stronger foundation for happiness as well, because as you're aligning with your values, all four bodies also align, right? Yeah. You think, for example, yeah. what it feels like if your top value is freedom and you're feeling stifled in your life. How do you think that feels? Mm. It feels awful. It feels yeah. constraining. It feels like you're stuck. It feels like you're confined. We want to we want to lift you up and help you thrive instead of being stuck. So that's part of it. And then the other piece is now we've removed all the noise. We've taught you to figure out what you need. Now you get to actually imagine a whole new set of possibilities. And so now your money beliefs are gone. Your love beliefs are gone. All of the things that stopped you from having your best life. Now, what do you want to create? That's a whole different playground. Yeah, because the hardest thing, you know, uh, I know we've had a pretty tough couple of years, but, you know, let's face it, uh, life is still good in comparison to maybe 200 years ago or even 100 years ago. So we, yeah. we have lots of opportunities. Um, if anything, you know, too many. And we need to get better at being able to say no to more things in order to say yes to the right things. But the only way you can do that is really to be, really clear on what is important to you first otherwise you're gonna start going the wrong way aren't you? you're gonna start Absolutely. going in directions that are gonna confuse things what is visual motor rehearsal <laughs> uh, visual motor re rehearsal is a technique that's been used by athletes for ages so you know the first time somebody ran a 10 second race you know it was it was impossible before the 100 meter dash to complete it in under 10 seconds and it was basically a belief system. So the first time somebody actually passed that 10 second mark, all of a sudden it became possible for anyone to do it. And so visual motor rehearsal is really, if you can, if you can see it, you can believe it, you can achieve it, right? There are three parts to achieving anything. If you can't conceive of it and you can't actually see yourself finishing that finish line, whether it's it's a, a sporting event or a race, as, as we're talking about in this particular sense, um, or it's a life goal, you know, that relationship, that happy family, that amount of wealth, that bank balance, that financial freedom, that five-star vacation three or four or five times a year, whatever your, your goal is for yourself, then you can't conceive of it. So skiers, for example, Olympic skiers will visualize every second of that race after they physically practice it they will visualize every turn what the wind speed might be where they need to take their next move and they will see themselves finish that race because if you can't conceive of it the chances are of you actually accomplishing it are very little so this is a a chance for you to practice two types of visualization there's the outcome visualization which is see yourself actually accomplishing it so let's take weight loss as an example if you want to lose I don't know, 30 pounds. That's a, that's a big goal. You know, it's a big yep. goal and going from here to a 30 pound loss might be too big for some people to conceive of. So you can break it down into process goals. I'm going to lose that first five or that first 10. And then when you get there, take a moment and just celebrate that success and how good it feels. And as you do that, you're rewiring the brain for success. You're rewriting. And when you say story. see that you're talking about like, you know, let's say, we have someone right now and, and they want to use third pound. They want to start this practice. They just take, take themselves off to a quiet place, close their eyes and start practicing the visualization of, of what that looks like. You know, what, what are the, 
what what the typical daily activities that they are taking part in can they visualize themselves cooking the foods that they're going to be cooking you know the time that they're going to be going to bed to look after their sleep all of these different things that create the new identity that achieves that goal is that the kind of thing that you're talking about mm -hmm. right Yes, and I'll, I'll describe what it means scientifically as well. So exactly all of that, if they can picture all of the little steps, like if you can picture yourself in this diet exercise that we're doing, if you can picture yourself, you know, uh, getting prepared for that workout, completing that workout, getting your, your meals prepped and ready, and getting all of the building blocks in order to achieve that level of success to reach that next step. If you can achieve all of those and start to visualize yourself doing it, here's what it does. And here's the science. And this is the part that fascinates me. So I apologize if I go into neuroscience. No, no, go into neuroscience, Mary, because I'm a bit of a geek on that side. So. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> so this is all based around the idea of neuroplasticity. And what that means is the brain can, the brain is not static. It can actually change over time. It's dynamic and it flows. So if you're waking up every day and you're going into autopilot mode, so let's say you wake up in your day and you start fretting about all of the things you need to accomplish in a day. All of those thoughts start to create a physical visceral sensation in your body. And then you start having feelings. So if you're worried about everything you need to accomplish in the day, do you have enough time, money, energy to get to it all? And then the feelings that go with it, oh, feeling of stress, feeling of anxiety, feeling of worry. Yeah. You know, and that creates a physical response. All of those three things then get bundled in your brain and creates a neural pathway and creates a neural pathway. The next time you wake up, the brain is designed to be efficient. We're, you know, we're, we're part animal. We are designed for survival. Remember mm -hmm. that, right? So we wake up in the morning, that same set of worrying thoughts and feelings get raveled, they get triggered. We hit the same path. We go down the same path every single day. If you want it to change, all it takes is learning these techniques and then learning that pause and stepping back and being able to observe, nope, I'm not going to go down that path of worry. Today, I'm going to focus on what I do want to feel, what I do want to think instead. And so when you visualize, here's what's really interesting. When you visualize yourself accomplishing the goal, the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic uh, areas of your brain are lit up. And what that means is if you can visualize yourself crystal clear, like what are you doing? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? And what are you feeling in that moment? And you actually can see yourself achieving that goal and how good it would feel to reach that first milestone of five or 10 pounds, whatever that was for you. How proud of yourself you would be, what you would be wearing. Would you go buy a new outfit? Would you, you know, go celebrate in some way? Like how good would it feel to finally achieve it? And as you're doing that, you're actually creating a new pathway for the brain to say, oh, hang on a second. This is new. I can do this. And the more you step into that thinking and feeling pattern, it creates a new neurology. And so what happens is our brain is so intelligent it actually starts to dismantle the old patterns, the thought and feeling patterns that are no longer used in as little as 10 minutes. Wow. So if you can just catch yourself and reset, catch yourself and reset, catch yourself and reset and choose to go back up to what you do want to think and feel soon enough, this starts to weaken and those resources get reallocated over here. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, the, the, the kind of the, the research is still relatively new on neuroplasticity, isn't it? Because in, in past decades, it was kind of thought that we were sort of born with the, the neural pathways that we had, and we were who we were. And, and that was kind of what, what you've got to yeah. play with. But now we kind of can't change his thoughts. And yeah, all <laughs> we know, we know we, you can change, you can change your patterns of behavior to improve your yeah. life, which is which is really important. Yeah. It's, amazing so r is repeat and rewire so this is this is what i was actually just gonna ask you um about because repetition really is the key to this isn't it and, and that practice that you just mentioned you know just for someone listening thinking oh yeah that sounds good but i really struggle to to do that i, I would struggle to even mm -hmm. imagine what good would look like well you're not saying this is easy are you this is this is something that takes a bit of repetition takes a little bit of practice how long would 
someone have to kind of repeat and practice this process um well i guess that's what you're going to go into on repeat and rewire anyway <laughs> exactly and that's why i built the six-week program so we talked a little bit about neuroplasticity and what they found is you can actually see now with new uh, fmri technology brain scan technology how long it actually takes for the the you know i can get into synapses and dendrites and all of the the brain technology but i will just describe it in this way if you see the old neural pathway as the one that has you stuck and not achieving your goals because your conscious mind is the goal setter and that 95 percent the subconscious is actually the goal getter so if that old pattern is getting you stuck and you're putting in new patterns. It actually takes 35 to 42 days, six weeks, in other words, 42 days, where this neural activity peaks and you can actually start to see the brain show lasting signs of change. So that's why I developed the six week program because I thought, why don't I give people tools that are easy to use in as little as 10 minutes a day and they can step into this. Now to speak to your point of, of visualization and how that might be difficult for some, it's because they're starting from the starting point of they're, they're carrying all their stress and their fear around with them. You have to remember that if they're going through this program, they're, off, they're already learning how to remove those obstacles so that they can think from a, a more clear mindset, mm. right? You, you've now removed all the obstacles and barriers to your success okay, now you can create from something. So yeah. the rewire is really figuring out that unique formula that you can put in place to create a daily practice. And visualization, you know, it can be done in a guided meditation, but you can also do it daydreaming. Imagine yourself achieving that goal, opening the door to that beautiful house. It's partly like the laws of attraction, but this is the science behind why it works. So if thoughts are energy, and we're putting energy out into the universe or however you wanna spin that, whether it's in your neural pathways or how that gets translated into your central nervous system, into your body, it can actually create material change in your world. Yeah. And there've been experiments that show this. I don't know if you ever um, saw the HeartMath Institute published this. They published uh, a study that had groups of people holding vials of DNA and one group was taught to just have focused thought, because thoughts have energy, just focused thought of unraveling or raveling the DNA strands. Group two had the instruction to focus on a powerful elevated emotion like love or hope or joy. And then the third group was actually taught to marry thought and feeling together. So have the intention, focus on the intention, the focused thought, of unraveling or raveling the DNA strands, one or the other, and a powerful elevated emotion. Can you guess which group actually caused physical change in DNA strands? The last one? The last one, yeah. So thought, focus thought and emotion together. Remember we were talking at the start of this call about yeah. consciously choosing your thought and feeling patterns to create new neurology, new, new habits in other words, creates a different outcome. So mm. what they realized was we finally had evidence to say, wow, thought and feeling together, if you can consciously choose and focus that, can actually create physical change in matter around you. Yeah. It's almost Which, like this sort of science behind the law of attraction in a way, isn't it? Your manifestation it's, it's kind of, again, debunking the woo-woo side of that term, yes. law of attraction, and kind of showing, well, actually, it's just basic science in action yes absolutely you're absolutely right it's the science and it's the secret sauce to manifesting anything you want in the world but in order to do that again like you've got to remove the the stuff that's causing stress and worry first yeah then you can then you can step into and that, that yeah and that, that can take a while right for some people depending on how much yeah. they how much work they've got to do um, yes, uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I wanted really to give people the tools to start coaching themselves. And again, yeah. if you have an awareness of it, oh my, you can't, once you see your patterns, you can't unsee them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right. So once you see that you have a limiting belief around money or creating wealth or getting into better shape or creating that, that good state of health or finding joy in your life, you can't not see it the next time it, it's playing out. 
Yeah. Right. So how it works is, do you want me to describe the strategy and yeah. see how it plays out? So imagine, imagine at three years old, you're sitting there and someone says something in the background. Now, before the age of seven, we are pure unconscious mind. So we are just a hundred percent sponge for everything coming at us. It doesn't matter if it's TV or a movie or your family talking in the next room or talking to you. But if you hear a belief about money or creating wealth, oh, not everyone's meant to be that wealthy or you have to be unscrupulous to create that sort of income or that sort of wealth. Well, that, start, that becomes the, the underpinnings of what is our belief system around mm -hmm. money. So as we subconsciously, so as we go through life then how that plays out is the next time something comes up, we actually may make money and then lose it because we don't believe that we want to be a bad person or unscrupulous in order to get that sort of dream life that we want. And yeah. so it's playing in our subconscious without even us realizing it. But if you can see it just once, you can't unsee it. And so the next time it shows up, you actually have a moment to pause and you say, oh, that's what that is. Well, I'm not going to let that stop me today. I'm going to make a different choice. I'm going to choose to think and feel differently. And if you're thinking and feeling differently, you can choose to act differently. Yeah, that would yeah. definitely lend itself to many self-sabotaging behaviors, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so we're, we are up to uh, uh, E, elevate and expand. Yes. So this is, you know, now we've taken your walls down. We removed all of the areas that caused impossibility for you. We figured out what you need and what you value. And we are starting to construct a frame for a life that you can visualize that would make you beyond happy now. Okay, now what do we do? Let's go bigger. Let's go even bigger. Let's go beyond what we can fathom now. Why not? Right. So this yeah. is learning at that last chapter is learning how to blow the walls away for good, eliminate the causes of stress and worry for good, set you down on the path to happiness and success. And again, it can only be done in six weeks. So it's it's super easy with these tools, because for me, I, you know, for me, I love efficiencies. I need something to be fast and powerful and I need to see results right away. That's just how yeah. I'm wired. So I design the system to be the same way. But the last piece of it is is learning how to stay in that elevated vibration. So in that last um, example I gave you of the Heart Math Institute study that they did, if you can keep yourself in an elevated state of emotion, in high vibration emotions like gratitude, here's an example of how that plays out. You can't feel grateful and stressed at the same time. Mm. You can feel grateful and joy at the same time. You can feel grateful and abundant at the same time. If you're in that moment of gratitude as an example of an elevated emotion and you can stay in that high vibrational emotion, then the thoughts are wired with that as well, right? Yeah, so if you're moving yeah. away from stress and you're choosing a new path, well, how do you stay there? Because people don't know how to do that, right? You go to a you go to a weekend course and you get all charged up and then you go back to your life. Yeah. And you go, oh, now what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so giving the people the tools to stay there. How do you stay in that mindset? What are the things you need to do every day to just stay there? And again, it's like 18 strategies, 10 minutes a day in just six weeks. And I promise it will change your life. And, and you've got meaning and purpose to, to go with that as well. Is mm -hmm. that yeah, I think we, we're actually biologically wired for purpose. We're biologically wired to help people. If you see, you know, if you're in a playground full of kids, you'll see someone fall down and, and kids will just naturally, without being asked or without being taught, go up and say, are you okay? Do you need yeah. something? Yeah. You know, we're, we're wired to help people and we're wired to have some connection to this earth. To have that doesn't happen so much when we get older. <laughs> Me and well, my wife that's... went to London last that doesn't happen so much in the adulthood we, me and my wife went to london i think it was last year and the lady fell over on the going up the tube and uh we couldn't believe how many people were just walking over her oh. <laughs> up the stairs oh my gosh. whilst we were helping is, her get up 
<laughs> this is a perfect example of getting older and people being on autopilot, right? They're just yeah. so wired just and so busy pounded. and just on the go. And this lady's like, just cut her knee open and we're like helping her up. And people are like running past her and like tutting at us because we're helping and getting in the way of this. <laughs> like, what? what have we but turned here's into? The you having stopped to help felt good about yourself. I, I'm pretty sure. Well, that- it just felt like a, a natural a thing to do to be quite sure. honest um but yeah as it, as it just... would for me or you know any good-hearted person but i think again when people are so stuck in their ways and they get so stuck on autopilot there's not a single person that could have felt good about running away from that situation mm. so meaning and purpose is really tapping into now you're aligning your four bodies there's a piece missing because if you're connected to this beautiful universe that we're living in and you understand the interconnectedness of all things and all people, then, you know, finding a way to use our own strengths and talents to be able to give back to this world. And it could be something as small as, you know, if, if you're a funny and naturally funny person. You like to make your friends and family laugh. You're bringing joy to the world. If you're finding meaning and purpose by joining a nonprofit foundation, great, that's a bigger cause. But there's so many smaller ways that people can do this. Mm. You know, in terms of if you have a musical talent, then you're bringing joy and something soulful to the world. So just finding a way to give back in, in a way that resonates for you, again, because it's unique. You know, some people feel pressured when they think of meaning and purpose as you you need to do something community service to give back you can give back in lots of different ways just figure out what resonates for you and that'll bring additional harmony to your life yeah and and again it comes back to you know your values and what's important to you and 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 like the the self-awareness isn't it really yes yeah absolutely Knowing who you are um so in, in, obviously your app get zen is the action part of this as well you know so can you just give us a, a bit of an idea of what get zen is I'm, i haven't had a chance sure. to look at it just yet so i'm excited to to look into it yeah <laughs> well the the tool the the get zen app was actually designed as a tool to bring all of these techniques and tools together so If you've ever done a guided meditation, it would feel like a guided meditation, but it's not a meditation as such in terms of the woo-woo sense. It's really a way for you to sit. Not everyone can sit quietly. Yeah. You know, not everyone wants to sit in silence in in a yoga position and and find their, their source energy or center. Some people need a little help. I actually couldn't do it silently. So I found what worked for me was to do visualization in my meditations and set my intentions for the day. And I wanted Mm. to think about how do I wanna feel if I'm choosing to think and feel in certain ways, how do I wanna feel? So all of those tools are actually built into the Get Zen app. So you can, there's one called Get Meditating in the morning. There's one called Get Into Performance Zone. There's one called Get Focused. So they're specifically written by a trained coach (laughs) and a trained hypnotherapist with the right language of the subconscious to get you out of being stuck and into a more powerful peaceful way of being so that you can actually just step into that mindset and it takes the guesswork out of it because you don't have to figure out what you want to visualize on for the day there's little cues in these tracks that help guide you there so you literally just put on your headphones and you know, 10 or 20 minutes later, you're in a whole new headspace and it starts your day off right. Oh, wow. Does does it work like, you know, you do it for a certain period of days or a month or six weeks, or is it just, you just go at it as and when you feel like you need it? Um, Well, because we've talked about, you know, the rewire system, we know that a daily practice is important to keep you in that right thought and feeling pattern keep you in that right mindset so that you can take the appropriate actions towards happiness and success. So this works in the same way. Ideally, you would want to practice it every day if you could. In the morning is best because you're, you know, don't check your emails yet. Just just get your coffee or whatever your morning ritual is and start your day off peacefully. I assure you it's so much better than starting feeling stressed, you know, getting your coffee and already worrying about the day starts the wrong cycle of thought and feeling patterns right it starts that cycle of i was going to ask you about sort of morning routines and and what what are some of the 
top tips to, to well things not to do but also obviously top tips to do so you obviously not looking at the email straight away and maybe not looking at your social media immediately what would you what mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? Anything That's else? That's definitely one of my first is yeah. don't wake up and, and, and anything that requires your time or your energy or your attention or your money is going to drain you of energy, right? Mm. So if you think about instead, what does it feel like when you wake up on holiday? Yeah. Right? You're not worried about the day. You're just yeah. sitting peacefully and having your coffee. And it's one of the most glorious mornings you'll ever have. So you can replicate that every day. If you just wake up and instead say, I'm going to take 20 minutes and just retrain my brain and quiet my mind and just rewire back to calm, then you can start your day off on the right foot. And if you're starting your day off on the right foot, then you're starting in that thought and feeling pattern and you're creating new neurology, you're creating and rewiring a new set of habits. And as you do that, it actually has a benefit of almost, I think it was 18 to 24 hours after a period of meditation. And again, however you do that is fine, whether you do it in a visualization or use the app, you know, it keeps you in that sort of peaceful mindset for, for a whole day. Mm. It doesn't just last that 20 Yeah, minutes. I was going to, I mean, you, you would know much better than me. I, I do follow a lot of this stuff and, and read and I've studied courses and I've heard that because like we mentioned that, you know, people can think of things like meditation and mindfulness is a little woo woo, but the science is really clear on this. Now this, this, this is no, no, no longer like woo woo. This is, this works. And this is really having massive um, positive effects on our brain, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think you've seen it in, in TV shows and movies. You've seen it in, you know, you watch the show Billions, head fund manager, you know, sits in meditation. This is proven science. Some of the top minds in the world have been doing this. Steve Jobs was meditating. Yeah. You know, lots of people are accessing <clears throat> this because if you can quiet the mind, you're actually much better able to perform in your life, in your work, in your relationships. You're managing your energy levels better. It gives you the ability to emotionally regulate as well. So you have more control over how you respond to situations. So it actually slows down your, uh, your natural ability to react and you're starting the day off right. So instead of you know waking up and getting wired with stress, you're waking up and you're consciously choosing to start off peaceful and productive and in high performance zone. Mm. And once you do that, the rest of your day just goes so much more smoothly. I can't explain it. The science says a lot already, um, but once you start practicing it, you can't, you can't not feel like your life is just flowing easier. Opportunities come to you, you're in the right mindset. So all of a sudden doors are opening. It's really just a, a beautiful and magical, powerful way to live. Yeah, yeah. You just, just to, I really enjoyed this conversation and I'm, <laughs> I'm aware of your time so we, we can wrap things up. Uh, I just, you just mentioned the word flowing and you just made me think about flow. We've had um, a couple of experts on the podcast about flow state uh, yes. and um, how does, how does it link in with flow state, Sarah? Does it, is it the, a bit of a connection there? Absolutely. I think this is flow state. So if you're in that state where you are consciously choosing how you want to think and how you want to feel. That is flow state, right? So if you're in a state, like wh whether it's athletics, you get in a zone, you get in a zone where you're challenged enough. And so how they, how they actually uh, define state of flow in the positive psychology realm is it has to be challenging enough to keep you engaged, but you have to be relaxed enough that it's not feeling like work. So how you get into that state of flow, again, if you're relaxed and happy and, and living life according to your own conscious choice versus being on autopilot, mm. you can stay in the state of flow most of the day just by starting in that way. So it's yeah. absolutely connected. Wow. Fantastic. Such interesting stuff. I hope everyone that's been listening has been as interested as I have been. Um, I've made loads of notes here. So I hope you have been as well, guys. Um, well, I think it's pretty clear that if you want to live a happier, healthier life, you want to get um, this book, the Six Weeks to Happy book by Zara. Um, Carson, this is it was amazing. Uh, what we will do for you, Zara, is put the link to your book. I'm guessing it can be found on Amazon and, and all. Is there anywhere particular 
you'd like people to go to kind of look into it more, find out more about you? Oh, sure. Yes, they can go to getzend.com. That's G-E-T-Z-E-N-D.com. Or they can just go to sixweekstohappy.com and they can look at the, the latest and greatest, whether it's the book or the app or upcoming coaching programs. It's all very exciting. And I'd like to invite your audience because I really, you know, I'm just so excited about wanting people to, to master themselves and really wanting to thrive and improve the quality of their life. That's certainly my mission. And I, I welcome everyone to check it out and just go to sixweekstohappy.com and start start your journey today. Don't wait. Oh, it's fantastic. too short. No, no, I definitely will. I'm going to be really promoting this to our members. I think they'd really benefit. And um, yeah, what? just thank you once again for having me on. One question I'm sort of finishing off this year. Obviously, our podcast is called Mastering You. Mm-hmm. What does mastery or self-mastery mean to you, Zara? Yeah, I think um, great question. And, and thank you, Matt, for having me on the show. For me, uh, self-mastery is really being able to step into a version of yourself that's that's so powerful. You know, I mean, like, what if you feel like you couldn't fail at something? It's that feeling. What if you could wake up every day and say, oh, I've got this. I'm so excited to start my day. So self-mastery is really about getting to a mindset, getting to a state of mind where you can wake up and think and feel more powerfully and really choose to accomplish whatever you can because it is possible. You've only been told it's not possible and we can undo all of that. So mastering you is really just figuring out how to step into the best version of you and we can help you do that. Oh, that's a fantastic definition. Brilliant. Zara Carson, thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much, Matt. See you soon.